Welcome once again to Inside Athletics, brought to you by the IAAF. I'm your host, Atto Bolden. This week, we conclude our interview with the Olympic 100-meter champion, Shelly Ann Fraser-Price. Uh, let's talk um, relay for a little while. The Jamaican 4x1 has been running exceptionally well, Beijing notwithstanding. Um, you guys have your, your national record all the way down to 41-4, and yet you were way behind the United States last year. Um, as well as you did in London last year, did you go away from, from the Olympics feeling like, you know what, we have to answer what the United States has done in this 4x1 going under 41 and setting the world record? Yeah, um, when um, when they brought the world record, I was like, oh man, that should have been us in 2008. <laughs> no, you know, um, as I say, I don't believe in coincidences, right. you know, things happen because they're supposed to happen that way. And I said that if as a team we had the right attitude that we had last year, we would have had that world record a long time. But we didn't have that, you know. Um, I A lot of, you know, egos had to do with, you know, who wanted to do what and, yes. you know, I'm not saying that I believe like I've always said that I don't believe I'm a very good starter for a relay but I mean if they say go and start I'm that type of person hold on stop the tip you don't believe you're nope. a very good starter no for a relay but you won the best starters in the world if not the best starter in the world yeah I mean, but not for a relay really. games but not, not for a relay really. what's different because, because it's on the turn it's the turn as well because I'm not very good at turn runner but ah. I think um, also it has to do I think I'm a better uh, I run the back stretch way better than no, I would prefer other. to run second yeah I prefer to but run yet second. still this is an important point though because a lot of times with other countries um, the person who is the, the superstar gets to pick which leg they want to run and yet in Beijing you let off as I recall mm -hmm. And in London, you let off. Mm -hmm. And in both of those Olympics, you were the Olympic champion. What is it about your lack of ego where if they tell you run first, you go, okay, if that's the best for the team, I'll go. <laughs> I mean, I'm just that type of person. I, I hate confrontations. You know, I hate to get into the mess of anything. Yes. And, you know, even when there are times when we have trouble for, you know, of course, Stephen sometimes will say, oh, you're not running this leg, you're running this <laughs> leg. I want to stay out of it. I'll be like, you know, I run whatever. Yes. Just so that there's no arguing or fussing because I hate it because I don't do well when persons argue or anything. Right. So, of course, I believe that, you know, you don't do much damage on a starting leg. For a person with the potential that I have and the times that I've run yes. in those championships, I don't do well. I won't give much on a start leg. So, if I understand what you're saying, it sounds like you think for you guys to be under 41 as well and to sort of answer what the United States has done, you have to be running a different leg. Yeah, I believe. Second. Mm -hmm. I don't like to lose. <laughs> you don't like to lose, but I pay attention to when all those cameras are on you. And when you lost in 2011, right, at the World Championships, you got fourth. First time off the podium since 2008. And the only championship that you've lost since 2008. You had a sort of a wry smile on your face as if to say, if I could be that close to winning and meddling with the worst race I've ever run in a championship, these ladies are in trouble next year. <laughs> Did I read that right? Because <laughs> you, you, you were fourth place, right? Defending world champ, fourth place, walking off the track, smiling like, that's fine. <laughs> well, I mean, I look at things different from so many other persons, you know? I'm grateful for every chance I get to compete yes. and compete, uh, you know, well. And 2011 was a rough year in terms of injuries, and mm -hmm. I had a calf injury that was bugging me the whole year yes. and you know I went into the finals and you know I didn't come away with a medal but a part of me just felt like you know why am I such afraid of this event why am I such afraid to go and compete and I know I have this yes. I believe I'm one of the greatest athletes to have you know to be living and I'm such afraid and I crossed the line and I'd be like working for it and I'm like wow I came for it <laughs> it was like you know next year I'm at it again and immediately I start to think about hard work, thinking about, you know, getting up, thinking about using this as a motivation to move forward, thinking about, you know, what 2012 would be because 
Olympics uh, in 2008 when I won the Olympics and I got the chance to go to school um, full time to do my degree, I'd made um, a vow to myself that in 2012 I will be graduating with my degree and also becoming an Olympic champion again. Right. So I had that all in my <laughs> head. So, you know, it was like no distraction, yeah. none at all. Even though I came for it, I was still focused on what is my goal for 2012. People who are starting to figure out um, the Jamaican formula for success have figured out two things. One, the talent has always been here. Mm -hmm. The second one is that athletes like yourself have figured out, as you said, stay home. Don't go and burn yourself out for four years somewhere else. Yeah. Don't go and be miserable. As you said, you, didn't, you don't have family um, in the United States. Do you feel like a pioneer? You talk about a Safa and most people see a Safa as, as obviously the pioneer mm -hmm. and Bridget certainly. Do you see yourself too as a pioneer in terms of 50 years from now, we'll look back and say, yeah, it was Shelly and Fraser Price and Asafa and Bridget and, uh, and, and Sharon who stayed at home and showed everybody else the way? Well, I definitely believe that, you know, because um, from the interaction that I've had with a lot of yeah, younger athletes who most of them now want to stay home and they want to be Shelly Ann and, you know, they're, 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 they emulate me so much you know that they want to run the way I run they want to do everything and I think that's really good for for our country and the, um, developed in our sports because a lot more of our, our young athletes are no more focused than they've ever been 10 years right. ago because I wasn't like this in champs they're <laughs> really focused and uh, you know it's all due to the fact that we have stayed home and they see how well we compete and you know everybody has somebody to look up to and I'm glad to be a part of that revolution and when you started in this business, you weren't exactly highly touted. You were third at Carifta, you had gotten fourth at CAC Juniors. You'd done okay at Champs. <laughs> but I don't think anybody who wasn't an absolute Shelly Ann Fraser, uh, Fraser at the time fan would have said, okay, this young woman is, is destined for greatness. What were your goals when you when you signed with MVP and got involved? Well, you know, um, when I started in 2006, I actually came here late. I went to MVP very late because at the time I was still undecided on what to do, you know, for school and everything. And I, I knew that deep down I didn't want to go away because, you know, I didn't have any family there and I needed that support because I'm a homebody person, <laughs> right? And um, I don't believe in coincidence and I went to, to our KFC one late night. <laughs> wow, one so late the night. double Olympic champion is at KFC level. Okay, well, you might have to edit that out. <laughs> I went there and I saw Paul Francis who actually right. said, you know, Steve has been asking for you and I'm like, yeah, and he was like, what are you doing for school? And I said, I'm still undecided, you know? And he's like, come and give us a talk on Monday. And I said, all right, sure, no problem. And I went and I spoke with him and I said, okay, fine. I told my mother I was going and I went and you know, um, I had so much to gain from the experience, you know, having Asafa being in the camp, Sharon and Bridget and mm -hmm. all the other persons who were doing so well in the camp. So it was, a, it was a good move for me and I was home, which was most important for me. One of the things that you've um, been involved with is your, your UNICEF Global uh, Ambassador. Uh, you've talked a lot about, you know, your, your interest in empowering, empowering women. Um, talk a little bit about what UNICEF has allowed you to do, both abroad and, and locally in Jamaica. Well, um, one of the things that I'm grateful for um, being a part of the UNICEF um, family is that I'm able to lend my voice to a cause that's affecting Jamaica, especially poverty amongst our children and education, you know, because I've seen where if a, a child uh, is not being fed properly, then they won't learn, right. you know, and a lot of our children now are having children, so you, it means that a lot lot more children are turning out for school and if there's no resources you know to to meet these needs that are affecting especially our inner city community and our youths in Jamaica then what will what will it say for our education system you understand what will it say for them learning because I'm from an inner city and you know I've been in poverty so it's nothing new for me and I understand I can see how a six-year-old will be you know or a 10 year old will be in class not learning because this child have not had a meal in the morning. And I understand all of that. And being able to, to be a part of something that if I stand on the stage and I speak in a school or a community persons listen, mm -hmm. I like that. It means that I have a purpose apart from you know going on the track and running, yes. 
my purpose is to make sure that whatever it is I do off the track is something that will help persons you know and I and I love doing that because I've been helped you know I've had persons reach out to me when I was younger and I and I've seen it that for most person all they knew it is that one person to just say I will be able to help you so I'm glad to be a part of UNICEF I've been to so many functions you know seen so many children and I've spoken with them and I sit and I see the impact you know we as an athlete have on them you know they believe they can do so much when we come and say you know what I've been in your situation and this is real for me so I'm not sitting around a table and tell them oh I know how poverty is I've lived it right so it's an example I'm an exam a living example to say that you know you're you, you can you know you can rise from this situation you can outgrow all of this you know if it's just how you think you know apply yourself you know get the help I know a lot of us we're so fulfilled with pride yes. that you know we don't seek help don't ask. yeah we don't you know because we we are afraid of what persons will think of us or the stigma that they'll attach of course I was in high school and primary school and I didn't tell persons where I live because I was afraid to tell them where I was from you know so I, I hid it of course so I told nobody oh I'm from Waterhouse yeah my close friends knew I was from Waterhouse but of course nobody else I would not say oh I'm from Waterhouse I would tell him I was from my aunt's house. <laughs> wow. My aunt lives in Corville. Right. So I said, oh, my aunt's from Corville, so I live in Corville. Yes. So I, I understand. Well, Shalian, I am just thrilled to, that you stopped by to be able to chat with us on Inside Athletics. I know you're going to enjoy the champs today. Yay, go Wilmers. And we, cer <laughs> and, we certainly, and we certainly wish you all the best in 2013 and beyond. Thank you. Our thanks to Shelly Ann Fraser Price for joining us this week on Inside Athletics. As usual, we want to hear from you. Let us know what you think via Facebook, Twitter, and email. That's on your screen now. We thank you for watching. We'll see you next time here on Inside Athletics.